Hello students, in this video I want to show you how to use and handle an oscilloscope. As you can see here on the table I have both types of oscilloscopes. So first the older analog oscilloscope from Harmic in this case and on the other side the digital oscilloscope from Tektronics. I want to show you both, so how to handle both and uh, I want to start with the analog oscilloscope. Before you switch on the oscilloscope, it's a good idea to check all controls, buttons and switches in their normal position. So let's start with the push button switches. So we have a lot of push button switches and they must be in the out position. So check every push button switch here, for example, dual is not in the out position. So all the push button switches are not pressed. And uh, this is first check you should do for the push button switches. Then you should check the slide switches. We have here one and the slide switch should be in the upper position, so like this. After that you should check all the rotating control. That means these kind of knobs here in this case, they should be in the centered position. That means here I turn it and now I can see, okay, here are all the knobs are in the centered position. So check all of them and that's okay. There are also three red knobs, as you can see, in the middle of the voltage base and the time base. And they must be calibrated. These are the calibration controls and they must be in the calibration position or, or cal position. So you can hear it um, if you turn the knob then there is a click. Now it's calibrated. Here also and here also. Now you can set the voltage base to yeah maybe a maximum of 10 volts or 20 volts in this case. So it's a good idea that you have here the maximum voltage per divisions in this case and the time base to useful value maybe some milliseconds so five milliseconds or so this is a good value for the start so if i power on the oscilloscope now you can see after a few moments yeah a trace so it takes a while here so let's wait a moment ah, you can see here now the trace and the important thing is now this trace is uh, channel one because channel two is usually switched off in uh, analog oscilloscopes. In order to move it down, you will see the position knob and you see I can move it down. Now you see it's not starting at the beginning. There's a X position knob and you can move it also here with a X position for the time base um, to have now the trace in the middle. So let's make the first measurement. Therefore I have here the Rigol function generator, so I switch on the function generator and I want to see a sinusoidal signal on the oscilloscope screen. And I have to adjust the function generator. First, uh, so the default values are 1 kHz for the frequency and the amplitude of 5 volt peak to peak. I want to set this amplitude to 8 volts peak to peak, so I set 8 and then voltage peak to peak. Uh, the next step is now I have to switch on the output. So you see I have here the connection to the oscilloscope and I have to switch on the channel of the function generator and now you can see here um, the signal on the oscilloscope. The function generator provides now um, pure AC signal, so we have a sinusoidal signal AC, 8 volt peak to peak, and if I set now my tr trace to the zero, to the middle, here, so I press here the button GD, that means no input voltage, I can set it to the middle, and I go back, and you see I have here now my 8 volts peak to peak. So I have here now 2 volts per division, 2, 4, 6, 8 volt peak to peak. I have 8 division in summary, so I can also set now the voltage per division to 1 volts. And uh, you see I use now the whole screen, which is usually also 
a good idea to use this in this way. I also can set now the time base because I have here more than two periods here on the screen. I can set here the time base maybe to to this value it's at the moment uh, 200 microseconds per division. So the next step is I will change now here the voltage per division to 2 volts back because I want to show you something. What I want to do now is I want to set an offset here at the function generator. So we have now 8 volt peak to peak and I want to set an offset of maybe 500 millivolts, that means um, 0 0.5 volts DC. So this is my offset at the moment. The amplitude is still 8 volts, peak to peak, frequency is 1 kilohertz. And now I want to see the offset. Um, therefore, you have to change here the coupling from AC at the moment, so it's not pressed, it's AC to DC. If I press now the DC button, observe the signal, you see it switched a little bit and this is now the 500 millivolt offset. That also means with the DC coupling you measure the AC as well as the DC part of the signal and with the AC coupling you only measure the AC part of the signal. This is very important for your measurements. For the next measurement I want to use both channels of the oscilloscope. Before I do this I want to set the offset here to zero. So I say zero volts DC, so no offset anymore. So a pure um, AC signal, sinusoidal signal. And um, if I switch on now the signal you see here is my signal on uh, channel 1. So this channel is connected to the function generator. This is also connected to a simple low pass filter and the output of the low pass filter is connected to the channel 2. In order to see the second channel, you have to press here the dual button. And now you see this is the second channel and if I change now the voltage base, you see now here the output of the low pass filter. At the moment I applied 1 kHz and I want to prove this 1 kHz using the oscilloscope. So therefore I just take channel 1 at the moment, so I switch off the second channel, so I press the dual button, so channel 2 is switched off at the moment. And now I have here the 1 kHz signal and I want to prove this and therefore I set the starting point of this curve here to the beginning. So you can see if I turn the trigger level starting point is change of draw of the drawing and then I set it here to the beginning. Now I have to count. I have five divisions. So one period is five divisions. I have set the division to 200 microseconds. 200 microseconds times five divisions is one millisecond and that means we have one kilohertz. So this is correct. Now I have to talk about the trigger a little bit. As you can see we have here a problem because the signal is moving through the screen and this is not good. So you cannot see anything here. In order to modify the settings you have to check all the trigger buttons at the oscilloscope. There are two buttons. The first button is here selecting the trigger source from channel 1 to channel 2. This is this button here. And another button is here the trigger external. And this button at the moment is pressed. There is no external trigger at the moment. So if I release the button, I have the same problem. So what to do? If that occurs, then please check out the second button for the trigger here, channel 1 and channel 2. And you see if I select now the channel 1 for triggering the signal, then you see the display is ok, I see the waveform exactly. If I don't want to trigger on channel 1, I want to trigger on channel 2, the signal is moving through the screen again because the second channel is so small on the screen that the oscilloscope cannot trigger. So therefore you have to change here 
the voltage base. And you see if it's a little bit bigger, the signal here on the screen, then the oscilloscope is also able to trigger. Okay, that's from my side. That was a very rough overview over the handling of an analog oscilloscope. Now let's continue with the digital oscilloscope. This digital oscilloscope Tektronix has also two channels. It has also an input for an external trigger. Um, as you can see here, we have um, the voltage base for both channels. We have the buttons for uh, channel 1 and channel 2. Then we have here the time base, so the horizontal area here in this uh, case. And we have here the trigger. So this is the same like in the analog oscilloscope. Uh, we have additional buttons for some measurements and tools. Also, there are some buttons here next to the screen. In comparison to the analog oscilloscope, you cannot see here the settings of the voltage and the time base. So what we have to do first, we have to switch on the oscilloscope in order to see the settings. Usually all settings are displayed later on here in the display. And uh, let's see what happens if you power on the oscilloscope and what to do with the settings. So it takes a while here it, until it starts. At the beginning you also can set the time and the date. I will not do this now, so let's wait. Now you can see here the first screen and here you can set the time and date. But we have to wait, so also, or you can press a button. Yeah, you can see here now the screen and there is no trace at the moment, so I have to change here things on the oscilloscope. So the first thing is I want to check if channel 1 or 2 is switched on or off. Here at the moment on the left side there is no um, information, means an arrow. Uh, that shows me if a channel is on or off, so I press first maybe the button 1. And then you can see here the small arrow. Here you can see in detail the one and the arrow. That means channel one is switched on. And if you now look uh, on the lower left corner here of the screen, you see channel one has a setting at the moment of 100 millivolts per division. That also means um, that you have to change this or you should change this first. So I will change now the setting of channel 1 to a higher voltage per division. For this I change now here the voltage per division using this knob. And I set it maybe here to the maximum, here in this case of 50 volts. So the next step would be maybe to check the time base. And you see here the time base is set to 10 milliseconds per division. Um, as you remember from the analog oscilloscope, so as talk about uh, some milliseconds per division is okay, so we can keep this value and um, this is okay. So at the moment I still can't see a trace here for channel 1 because the arrow shows me that the channel 1 is here upper this display. So I have to change now here the position and move it down. And you can see here now, here we have the trace for channel 1. So I also want to make channel 2 visible. So there's no arrow for of channel 2, so I press the button of channel 2 and you see the arrow is here. The voltage base is not okay, it's 50 millivolts, so I change here the voltage base to maximum 50 volts for example. Arrow shows me it's under the screen at the moment, so I turn here now the position knob and you see okay. Channel 2 is also there. Now I want to make the same measurement as before. So I, I have adjusted the function generator to 1 kHz with an amplitude of 8 volts peak to peak. And um, I have connected now here the crocodile clamps here to my little low pass filter. And um, channel 1 is the input of the low pass filter, and channel 2 is the output. And now I switch on the function generator. So you can see here some changes. 
but in order to see this in detail we have to change the voltage base so it's 50 volts per division I expect 8 volts peak to peak so I have to change here first channel 1 with this knob to a lower value for example to 2 volts and also channel 2 and um, here you can see channel 2 is a little bit below the middle so I move here the position of channel 2 also to the middle. The next step is to set the time base here with this knob so for the horizontal area this is the time base here for the oscilloscope I change it also to the lower value I have 1 kilohertz so 10 milliseconds is too high so I will drop down it here to some microseconds and now I have here the same view as before in the analog oscilloscope so I have my input signal and my output signal of this low pass filter. Now I want to talk about the trigger. Um, here on the right side of the screen you also see a blue arrow in this case. That means the trigger is now set to the second channel. So if I press the button trigger menu on the right side here, then you see my trigger source is channel 2. If I now disconnect my signal of channel 2, then you see there is no signal at channel 2 anymore. The oscilloscope is triggered on channel 2, but it cannot trigger because there is no signal on channel 2. So you have the same situation as before in, at the analog oscilloscope, the signal moves through the screen. In order to make a stable picture here, we have to change now the source to channel 1. You see there are some more sources, um, but here channel 1 is the right source at the moment because only channel 1 is used. You also can change the trigger level by using this knob and you see here the arrow is moving up and down and here on the lower right side you see the trigger level so in the voltage where the trigger is set to. Now I want to talk about the menu here. Um, for this I switch off the second channel because I don't need this anymore. I want to show you this only for the first channel. So if you press the button here, you can either switch on and off yeah, the channel as you can see, but um, if you press this button, there also appears this menu. You see here channel 1. And I want to talk now here in detail the important things you should know. There are five parameters here in this menu for each channel. I want to talk about three of them. So the first and most important I think is a coupling. A second one is here the voltage per division setting and the setting for the probe which is also very important. Let's start with a coupling parameter or coupling setting. As I mentioned in the part of the analog oscilloscope, um, the coupling AC only measures the AC part of the signal. The coupling DC measures the AC and the DC part of a signal. I have here now a pure sinusoidal signal AC that means um, there is no change between DC and AC so if I switch from DC now to AC nothing happens here because the DC part of the signal is zero. The coupling ground means um, the input is zero at the moment there is no signal um, at the input of channel 1 in this case, so this is my zero line. What I do now is I couple to DC and I set now an offset um, at the function generator maybe of 1 volt, 1 volt DC and if you observe now here the signal it's going a little bit higher and this is a 1 volt DC part of the signal but it also shows the AC part here of the signal. With the AC coupling now, you see the DC part is dropped out, so I only measure the AC part of the signal. The next setting is here the voltage per division. If I change now the voltage base here and observe on the left side here the setting, 
I can change here uh, at the moment from 2 volts, for example, to 1 volts or to 500 millivolts or up to 5 and 50 volts and so on. This is a core setting. You also can set it to fine and you will see I can set it here, for example, to 4.96 volts and lower. So I have here um, steps of 40 millivolts. Um, I think it's usually not useful to use here the fine setting of the volts per division. I would keep it to coarse and now I can set it here again back to 2 volts per division. The next setting belongs to the oscilloscope's probe. You see here the setting is 10 times voltage and if you look at the original probe you see here the label 10 times so 10x or what it is. Um, if you have this kind of probe then you have to set here the probe to 10 times. This is the default value for this kind of oscilloscope. There are other probes which have the possibility to change this here on the probe. As you can see here um, I have the possibility to set it to 10 times or 1 times using the switch. If you have this kind of probe you can either set it to 10, then you have to set it here in the oscilloscope to 10 times voltage, or you set then the attenuation to 1. So there's a possibility here one time, um, then you have to set here this probe also to 1. So it must fit. So this switch setting must fit to the attenuation here of the oscilloscope. I will switch back to 10 times because it's the default value for the normal probe here of the tectonic oscilloscope. For the trigger there is a button, trigger menu, then you can see here the menu inside the screen. And there are also some things I have to talk about. Uh, most important thing is here the trigger source. So the trigger source can be either channel 1, channel 2, and also external trigger. If you remember, I have here the connector for the external trigger. If you have an, a source which uh, works as an external trigger or is useful for an external trigger, you have to set here the source to the external trigger. Another source is AC line. AC line means I trigger from the 230 volts, 50 hertz grid. So if you have, for example, a transformer where you have want to see here the output of the transformer it's a good idea to set the trigger type source to AC line. So you can see at the moment AC line is set but the signal moves through the screen so I set it back to channel 1 and I get a stable picture here. You also can set the trigger level here, you see it here with the arrows, but you also can press here the trigger view button for example and then you can see here the trigger level, so I keep pressed this button and then I can see here with the dashed line the trigger level at the moment, the blue line at the moment is now the channel 1, so if you want to see this, it's also nice to see here the trigger level. Even if all settings are okay and you have no clear stable signal here on the screen, then try out the coupling. So with a coupling you can, for example, reject noise. So if you have a lot of noise on your signal, try, try out this. Also a high frequency or low frequency reject. If that doesn't work, also try the mode normal and auto. There's another point, this is a slope at the moment, this is on rising. That means the trigger triggers here in the middle at the moment and for the rising edge. So it starts from here up to the rising edge. And um, if you make it uh, to the falling, as you see it's going down at this point. So the trigger level is at the moment almost zero, I think. Yeah, it's some millivolts. And now I change it here yeah, to, this, to the middle and here with the falling and rising slope you can change the trigger direction. Last but not least I want to talk here about these kind of buttons. 
they implement some nice tools and helpful things. I don't want to go in detail with that. It's only one thing I want to show you is here the measure function. Now I pressed the measure button and you can see here now the four places for the measurement results or measurement types. So what I want to measure first is the frequency of channel 1. So I can press here the button channel 1 and you can see here now the type. I can choose here the type. First type is frequency 1 kilohertz. Then I can uh, press here back. And then you can see here in the first place the 1 kilohertz. Maybe another measurement. Same procedure on the second place, channel 1. Um, I want to measure here the period time, for example. Um, but I want to do this in another way. I don't want to press this button. If you see here, this LED is on next to this knob. If this LED is on, you can use this knob in order to change here the setting. In this case, I can change now the type. So if I turn the knob, you can see I change the type of the measurement. In this case, I want to see the period time and then I go back and I can see here on the second place the period time. One millisecond is the period time, one kilohertz is the frequency, so it seems to be okay. Here you can see also the channel 2 is switched off at the moment, so if you want to measure something on uh, channel 2, you have to switch on the channel first uh, by pressing the channel 2 button. Be aware of the values here. If you turn now the voltage per division a little bit lower, like this, you get here the question marks. And that means the measurement result of the oscilloscope is not clear, it's not correct. Um, in order to change this here, you have to change now the voltage per division to a lower value so that you get here a clear, stable signal. Yes, and this was a short rough overview over the measurement using an oscilloscope, the digital and an analog oscilloscope, and I hope it was helpful. Bye.